It was like any other day. Me and my little brother, Blake, we were watching Karate Kid while they went to the store. I realized, I'm like, dang, ain't, Mike and Ski didn't come back. And I called my mom. She's like, yeah, Mike got shot. Mike got shot. They shot him, he's dead. I grew up in uh, Brownsville, Brooklyn, and uh, Tilden houses. You see people get killed, stabbed, robbed, doing drugs, all that type of stuff. Who is Michael Hayden? My older brother. He was four years older than me. Mike wanted to box, but uh, he couldn't because uh, he had sickle cell anemia and it would like immobilize him sometimes. Like he would be in excruciating pain. What did he tell you when you started boxing? I was gonna be better than Muhammad Ali. I didn't believe him at all. I thought he was just talking just cause he's my brother. I think he was living through me for sure. Did you think you were gonna lose him? Not like the way we did. We... In November 2014, on his way home from the video store, Hayden, who walked with a cane, had words with the man who pulled out a 45, and despite raising his hands in a gesture of surrender, shot him dead. What do you remember about the funeral? A weird experience. It didn't really look that much like him. It wasn't him inside that casket. What happened to your boxing career after your brother passed? It wasn't like I just had this burst of motivation, like, oh, I'm gonna do everything for Mike. I was super depressed. You know, I, I fought in the Golden Gloves that year for the first time, and I lost you know, in the finals, and I felt super embarrassed in front of my hometown fans. I was a big favorite to win that fight, and Depression I- Depression was sapping you. Yeah, it was, it was really bad. It was really bad, so I just couldn't function as a fighter. Could you function as a person? Nah. In 2018, Hayden's killer was given 20 years. Carrington attended the sentencing, thinking it might finally provide closure. It did not. I just locked on him, and I just could not stop looking at him. Like, I really wanted to jump over those seats and attack him, and I just erupted, and they had to take me out the courtroom. I've never had that type of rage in my life. I never wanted to dismantle a person in my life like that. I feel like it's natural to, get to have those evil thoughts. Natural, of course, especially in Brownsville, but also self-destructive. I wanted to quit boxing. My dad was like, yo, like, he gave me some time, some months, right? So he was like, listen, bro, you gotta at least, you know, go back to boxing or you gotta get a nine to five. He went back to the gym, started working, then working harder harder than he ever had. Gradually, his revenge fantasy faded, and he came to hear a voice, a familiar one. I started hearing Michael's voice, and um, he's like, there you go, Shu, you're doing it. Look, you keep going. What a statement! And I'm seeing the results of it. My, oh my, Shu, Shu. That is when I really started to believe in myself. I'm like, oh, wow. How do you know that it's real? I knew it was real to me, because it was just like, the things that he was saying before he passed. Devastating power from Shu Shu! To where I was like, yo, he said this. Like, I can't believe he said this. And the fight is over, what a finish! And it would just be like, do you see it now? Do you see what I was trying to tell you? 